Oh yeah, and the big charger. Ooh, that charger, man. That black Dodge Charger has been in so many famous car chase movies throughout the years. Brad, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. We're gonna be doing something around cars. Oh, well, that's my wheelhouse, man. So I have my own YouTube channel. It's called Retro Cars Forever. It celebrates cars of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, so I might be a little bit biased to those decades. I love all cars. I'm brand agnostic. I'm not one of those guys who only likes Fords, only likes BMWs. I think all cars are pretty dang cool. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna show you a few lists. These lists are all around cars. And these lists were voted on by the public. So we're gonna see if you think the public nailed these lists or if they need a bit of a re-rank. Got it. So this first list I'm gonna show you, this is the five best car movies of all time. This is the number five best car movie of all time as voted on by the public. So this is Baby Driver. He's got a Chevrolet Avalanche. This is the chase that's, I think, in the middle of the movie, but I personally think the one at the beginning with the red WRX is like even better. You ever see like the Terminator movies and you see like the Terminator's vision? For car enthusiasts, our brains are just like that with cars. When I see this, I automatically think Chevrolet Avalanche 2012. That's a Dodge Ram. This is awesome. Cars that have a, a higher center of gravity like that Avalanche there, you probably couldn't tilt it too much more before it would completely fall over. There's also this cheat right here that you'll see that I remember very distinctly, where how does he get out of this? He's stuck there, and then what magic does he do to get out of this predicament? I guess he just, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> that was definitely a cheat that they put in right there. But still, it's a fun movie. It's a fun chase. If this was a top 10 list, I could see Baby Driver making that list, but personally, top five, of all time. All right, American Graffiti. This is a big spoiler, by the way, for anyone who hasn't seen this movie. This is like the end of the movie. There's not a whole lot of car action in American Graffiti. You're pretty much seeing it right here. I mean, it's basically a couple little hot rod races like this, and it's kind of over before it's even, you know, started. Uh, one of Harrison Ford's first roles, though, uh, George Lucas, who did uh, Star Wars, this was the movie he did pretty much right before that. It's a really good movie for that slice of life of car culture at the time. But as far as like a great like car movie, it's neat to see the cars, but there really isn't much action. Like you just saw all the actions in the movie pretty much. Now this is a movie with car action. This is what I'm talking about. All right, Fast and Furious, the very first one. This whole scene of these kind of tuner car culture had never really been shown on screen before. And I think that this movie, it's, it still holds up. I really like this movie quite a bit. This action is awesome, actually. <laughs> I forgot how cool it, ooh, I forgot how cool this action is. Oh yeah, and the big charger. Ooh, that charger, man. That black Dodge Charger has been in so many famous car chase movies throughout the years. They did a good job with casting the different cars, with Vin Diesel having the big, muscly Charger, and Paul Walker having the Toyota Supra. The first movie, is clearly the best of the series. The action isn't as maybe as intense or as over the top, but it definitely feels like it's at least sort of in the realm of reality compared to the other ones, which get really crazy. All right, there's that bandit. That's a great little stunt right there. Uh, this is Smoking the Bandit, the first one. This came out in 1977, and the only movie that made more money than this was Star Wars. Uh, this was just a huge movie at the time. By modern standards, this Trans Am is not very powerful. Um, it makes, you know, like a modern Honda Civic makes more power. But look how cool it looks. Uh, Trans Am sales from this movie went up like, like two or three two or 300% because of this movie. Movies romanticize cars and they look cool, they sound cool. They kind of go hand in hand. It makes a lot of sense. Product placement for cars and movies is a big deal. Just watch any James Bond movie, you'll, you'll see what I mean. This is the number one. This is number one for a reason. Good job, internet. I definitely agree with you on this one. Bullet was the really the first time we're like, we're gonna have a dedicated car chase and every shot is gonna be 100% real. Steve McQueen himself is doing a lot of the stunt driving. There's just no BS in this chase. They really are going really fast. I took my old Mustang on this route, actually, in San Francisco about 50 years later. Even this movie can't convey how scary they are and how talented those stunt drivers were to keep going at those speeds and that tight of a San Francisco street. They actually made a few special edition Ford Mustangs brand new after the fact, starting in 2001, and I actually got one. Even 
50 years after Bullet came out, that effect is so intoxicating of how cool this Mustang is that they, you know, were able to sell new Mustangs based on the power of this movie. And those were the top five best car movies of all time voted on by the public. All right. I'm surprised that American Graffiti uh, made that list, but in general, no, these are these are all bona fide classic car movies. Let's just go through it one by one. What is the best car movie of all time? Is it on this list? Is it not on this list? Number one, Bullet. I 100% agree with that. Good job, internet. You did that one right. I am going to remove Smokey and the Bandit. Regrettably, I love Smokey and the Bandit. It's a fun movie, but when we're talking like great car movies, right? That to me is two components. It is the quality of the movie itself and how much car action there is in that movie. Number two, so Bullet was such a good car chase movie that I think that it took 30 years for any movie to come even close to that level of a car chase. And it's a movie called Ronin. Ronin has three excellent car chases. Definitely gonna keep Fast and Furious on the list, but I'm gonna put Fast and Furious as number five. Just cause, you know, it is a little cheesy, but man, it's got some great car action. I'm sorry, uh, American Graffiti and Baby Driver. Uh, American Graffiti, I'm gonna have to remove Again, you see lots of cars, but there's not much car action. I love Baby Driver. It's a really fun movie. The other two I want to add are just a little bit more iconic. So number three is talk about a good movie. Uh, you got to have a Mad Max movie on here. And for my money, the best one as far as car action goes is the most recent one, which is Mad Max Fury Road. They made something like 200 custom cars for this movie. Almost the whole movie is like a chase. It's so creative and it's just such a great movie and they shot so much of it for real. We're missing something here, which is a racing movie, which is a whole genre of car movies that I think needs to be on this list. For my money, the best racing movie is called Grand Prix, which came out in the 1960s. This is a phenomenal widescreen format movie. It does such a good job of conveying not only the glitz and glamour of that era of motor racing, but also the dark side of how many people would die racing these things. I mean, they were basically, there was no safety equipment beyond just the helmet. The only thing keeping them together was just four little skinny contact patches of the tires and the driver's balls to keep them on the road. This is the new re-ranked list. What do you think? I think that is a great list and it gets my seal of approval. All right, so this list is locked? Yes, this list is locked. We've done the best car movies of all time. We're gonna go on to what the internet considers the coolest cars of all time. All right, number one, McLaren P1. Number two, McLaren F1. Number three, Koenigsegg 121. Number four, Ferrari La Ferrari, which translates to Ferrari the Ferrari. And number five, Ferrari 458 Italia. We have three manufacturers and pretty much one decade for the most part. Most of these cars are new. The only car in here that's even slightly old is the McLaren F1, which is a 90s car. Well, I think we should spread the love a little bit. I think that cool cars should be more than just, you know, one or two decades. There are definitely two that belong on this list. I would definitely keep the number two as the McLaren F1. This was a car not built to any sort of expense. It was just whatever it cost, that was what they were gonna use because it was the best thing. Even the engine compartment is lined with gold foil. Uh, the McLaren F1 had this really cool central seating position. So you sat in the center, your two passenger seats flanking either side of you. It was so far ahead of its time, it took like two decades for a car to come anywhere near its performance. Top speed of like 240 miles per hour, which was insane for the time. At number three, I think also belongs on this list, the Koenigsegg one to one. It's called one to one because it has that magic ratio of one horsepower to one kilogram of weight. 1,360 horsepower and 1,360 kilograms. To put that in perspective, that is like the weight of a Honda Civic, but with like nine times the power of a Honda Civic. So this thing is crazy fast. I think the top speed was like 273 miles per hour. There are only seven made. The Kona Seg is so stupid fast it can accelerate faster than falling. The coolest car of all time. I think America needs to be on this list. And I'm gonna put the Ford GT40. If you've seen the movie Ford versus Ferrari, you know all about these cars. This is the car that Ford designed to beat Ferrari at their own game in the 60s. And it absolutely dominated the European race circuits, which is pretty much the only American car before or since to be so dominant. Number four is the Lamborghini Countach, which I have here on my shirt. The icon of the 80s for me. It's been immortalized in movies like Cannonball Run and recently in Wolf of Wall Street. It is just a, an obscenely crazy looking car. Number five, I'm adding to this list 
the Ferrari Daytona. It was the car that was driven by the cool detectives in Miami Vice. This is just one of the coolest looking cars ever made. It is one of the most treasured Ferraris ever made. Absolute icon. Is this list locked? This list is locked. You've re-ranked two lists. What I want you to do now is I want you to put together your own list. And this is gonna be a little bit different than this coolest cars list. This is gonna be a list of the top five cars that an average person, you know, making a regular income can actually afford that are out right now. Number five on my list is the only classic I'm gonna put here, which is the Volkswagen Beetle, the original. They sold millions of these cars. There are so many to choose from. If you're looking to have a classic car, this is the best entry level classic car that you can own. Everyone loves them. Number four, I am gonna put the Jeep Wrangler, and I'm pretty much gonna include any Jeep Wrangler that was made before their redesign in 2007. After that point, they kind of became a little too popular, and also they're kind of known for engine problems, but get one that was made before that point, and they will last forever. They're tough as nails, they're so easy to fix. Also, for any single guys out there, I did an actual social experiment on my YouTube channel. We found that single ladies preferred guys with Jeep Wranglers above any other car, so tip free Romeos out there. So number three, I'm gonna pick the Porsche Boxster, the first generation. If you want a Porsche, that you can drive every single day, this is gonna be the one you're gonna want. Mid-engine, which means the engine's right behind you, which means that it has immediate responses for turning. The straight line is not that fast, like 200 horsepower, but around corners, it is one of the most fun cars I've ever driven. If you want a Porsche for cheap, this is the way to go. Number two, and I'm gonna be super biased on this, the Chevrolet Corvette, the C4 and C5 generations. Great performance, we're talking like around 300 horsepower or more, very light, small, low to the ground, handle great, but inside it's a luxury car. I own one of these. I have a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel that cover C4 ownership in particular. They are super fast and they look super rad and they got pop-up headlights, which is like one of the coolest things in that era. While my number one choice will not beat a Chevrolet Corvette in a race, it is the number one choice for cool cars you can own without breaking a sweat or your bank account, and that is the Mazda Miata. For the five to 15 grand price range, you're looking at the first three generations, the NA, the NB, or the NC. They're all super fun, rear wheel drive, put the top down, have a lot of fun. In the car community, there's a saying that Miata is always the answer. So that's my answer for number one coolest car that the average person can afford. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of ReRank. If you wanna know more about cool cars, please check out my YouTube channel, which is called Retro Cars Forever. Link in the description below. Goodbye, see you out on the roads.